Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get the absolute best out of your Milky Way photos. My name is Stan, AKA Sightseeing Stan, and I'm a photographer primarily focusing on travel and landscape photography. So if you're into photography, if you're into photo editing, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you won't miss anything. All right, let's jump into Lightroom. So this is the RAW file we'll be working with today. It was taken in Italy on my Sony A7 Mark III and my Zeiss Bathys 18mm lens. As you can see, it's a 20 second exposure at f2.8 with an ISO of 1250. And the foreground was lit using an extra LED light. I would suggest that with any photo you edit, you always start off with the lens corrections, especially when you're shooting with a wide angle lens this will have a huge impact on your image. So just select remove chromatic aberration and the profile corrections. And then something that I often forget to do is to make sure that the image is level. An easy way to do that is either in the transform tab by clicking level or you can go to the crop tool here and just click here on auto and it will automatically level the image. Enabling the lens corrections has already adjusted much of the exposure and again that is why I suggest that you start your edit with this. So let's start by increasing the exposure a little bit just until we get some more detail in the foreground. And you can tell already the Milky Way is coming out a bit as well. Now there is some light pollution in this image and it's a bit too bright. So I want to darken that with downing the highlights just a bit. And then by increasing the shadows, we're able to get some more detail out of that foreground. We'll then increase the whites a little bit to create a bit more pop in the image. You can tell as well, this brings out a bit of the Milky Way. And then let's lower the blacks just slightly to bring back a bit of contrast in the image. I always like to decrease the clarity just a bit to about minus 10, just to get a nice subtle soft look to the image. So if we look at the before and after now, we can tell that just these exposure adjustments have already made a huge difference in the image. So next up is fixing the white balance. And the way you want to do that, or the best way to do that, is to pull up the vibrance and pull up the saturation all the way. And obviously now your image is looking very funky and weird, but bear with me. So you go up to your white balance settings here, you select your eyedropper tool, and then just go to a dark area in the sky. And usually that's somewhere in the corners at the top. So just select a darkest area here. I think somewhere around here should be fine. And then go back to your vibrance and saturation and set them back to zero. The sky will now seem almost black and white and you know that the white balance is correct. So you can still adjust the white balance a little bit, just tweak it to your liking by using the sliders. So I would like it to be a little more blue, so I'm just going to drop the temperature a tiny bit, probably to about 4300. Now with the tone curve, we'll be able to add some more contrast to the image and make it pop even more. You can do that by adding three points to the curve. And you'll decrease the darker areas with this one. So just pull it down a little bit and then increase the brighter areas with this one. And then we're gonna fade it out a little bit with the one on the far right and the one on the far left. So you kind of get this classic S curve and you can see that that has added a bit of contrast back into the image. So next up is color and this is really where you're going to be able to bring back color in the image but also give it your own personal touch. So this image has a lot of orange and yellow in the foreground because of the light that was used to light paint that foreground. So I just want to desaturate that a little bit because I think it's too much. So I'm just going to go into the orange and the yellow and desaturate those colors. I'm also desaturating the color in the trees a little bit. So that's primarily green. So just a little bit because I don't want it to be too much. So for now, we don't really have to adjust any other colors in this image because primarily we had orange, yellow and green in the foreground here. 
Next up, we're going to color grading, and this is really where you can bring in that personal touch. I like to always have a little bit of blue in my shadows, so I just go to the shadows here, select the color blue that I like, a hue of 220, and just add some saturation. There's no magic number here, so it's basically just what you like. I am going to decrease the luminance a little bit just to add a little bit more contrast in those blues. You can further personalize your colors in the calibration tool. And I tend to play around with these sliders to see what works for a certain image. This is entirely based on my personal taste, but a good rule of thumb is to never push the sliders too far. So using the filters and the brush, we're really going to be able to make this Milky Way photo pop. For this image, I'm going to start by using a graduated filter to darken the foreground here. It's drawing a bit too much of the attention. Something like that looks fine. Next, we'll grab a radial filter and draw it around the Milky Way. Just make sure that the filter is inverted and that the feather is set to 100. So we'll increase the exposure, increase the highlights and the whites, and then we'll decrease the shadows and decrease the blacks. Let's also add some contrast in there. And this will make the brightest areas of the Milky Way come out a lot more. And we can also play around with the white balance settings just a little bit to maybe add a little bit more color in there as well. But never push it too far because it's just gonna look very weird. I'm just gonna add a little bit of saturation. Let's also add some clarity. Next, we'll grab another radial filter and we'll draw it next to the Milky Way and angle it in a way that the Milky Way is angled as well. So here, the Milky Way is going pretty much straight up. So I just wanna angle it like that. Again, make sure that the radial filter is inverted and set the feather to 100. Now we're going to lower the exposure, lower the highlights, lower the whites a bit, lower the clarity. And this is gonna make the area next to the Milky Way seem much softer, a bit more dark, and again, draw more attention to the Milky Way. We can duplicate this filter by right clicking and selecting duplicate, and then we can drag it to the other side of the Milky Way. I still find that the top of the image is a little bit too dark, so I'm just gonna select a graduated filter, draw it over the top of the frame, and then darken that part. It's just gonna frame the image, the entire image, a little bit better. Now with the brush tool, we can add some more detail to the Milky Way. I'm just gonna brush over the brightest area of the Milky Way, Increase the exposure, add some more clarity, maybe increase the whites a bit, decrease the blacks and add some contrast. So I'm going to add another brush tool and just for these really bright areas that we really want to highlight. Again, a slight boost in the exposure, some clarity and maybe a few nudges on the highlights here and a bit of contrast. So I still find the image a little bit too desaturated. So I'm just gonna go into the Vibrance and the Saturation tab here and add a little bit of Vibrance and some Saturation as well. And this is really bringing that image to life. And this is the final result of our edit. If we compare it to the RAW file, it's very obvious that we were able to get so much more out of this image. Now there is so much more in Photoshop that we can do to make this image even better, but that's for another video. I hope you enjoyed this Milky Way editing tutorial. If you use any of these tips to edit your own Milky Way photos, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I'd be very interested to see how they turn out. And if you have any questions about this tutorial or about Milky Way photography, don't hesitate to write me in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.